what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's going to help us break down week one DFS stacks. We made it, Jim. It sounds so sweet to hear week one NFL because it's been so long since we've had a full NFL slate. Like, I'm jacked for this. There are actually some pretty good games on the main slate. So I am super excited for this. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing well, man. It is, it's week one of the NFL season. I jumbled my words like multiple times with JJ yesterday, so I feel like I'm in mid-season form. So I'm very, very excited to start talking week one FanDuel DFS stacks. And when we begin talking stacks, we begin in Carolina, where I've been all over Cam Newton all off season, and pairing him with Christian McCaffrey certainly seems like a no-brainer on Sunday. Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite games on this slate, because the Rams are slight favorites on the road in Carolina, and the Rams play at a pretty high pace. And what that says to me is I should want to stack up Carolina. And I think the most logical pieces there are Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey because McCaffrey should get a lot of work in this passing game. He had 24% of the team's targets last year prior to Cam Newton getting injured. That is a huge number for a running back in addition to the work he gets as a rusher. Now this year we could see McCaffrey lose some carries at the goal line and that does matter. But really we're going here for the targets. That really doesn't bother me all that that much. He's my favorite high salaried running back on the board. Cam Newton last year before his injury, we kind of forget how good he was. He averaged 23.5 FanDuel points per game prior to that shoulder injury really setting in. And yeah, he's got the foot injury. Maybe that will decrease his running a bit, but Cam's always a player I want in a game that could be close and high scoring. That's what I would expect here. So I want to stack up Cam Newton with Christian McCaffrey. I can afford them pretty easily for this weekend, given the value we have at other spots. So I think that make a ton of sense. I'll run it back with Brandon Cooks or Robert Woods. I think overall this game is really attractive, and I want to focus most on Cam and Christian McCaffrey. LA and Carolina is going to be a fun one, but Jim, looking at all the stacks that we have, this is by far the most expensive one, combining a, a top running back, Christian McCaffrey, who's almost $9,000, and Cam Newton, who's almost $8,000. How are you going to be able to afford the rest of your lineup? Well, thankfully, Greg, we're going to talk about a couple of cheaper guys later on, uh, both at defense and at wide receiver, who can help get you there. And I think that on this week one slate, I, I kind of view salaries as being fake, like they're made up, like they don't really matter. It's like, whose line is it anyway? The salaries don't matter at this point uh, because there are so many values in the board. So I'm personally not super worried. I've had plenty of good builds so far with those two guys. So take advantage of the salaries being fake in week one and dive in on these expensive guys. Jim Sonis, also in midseason form. Salaries are fake. They don't matter. And giving us a tease for later on in the show. What else could you want? All right, let's move on to the next stack, and that brings us to another NFC South team. It's the Tampa Bay Bucks' first game under Bruce Arians, and it's a new Jameis Winston, a new Mike Evans. Right, Jim? I mean, honestly, I don't need them to be new. I just want the same thing that I saw last year because last year it was Jameis chucking the ball deep and Mike Evans being on the receiving end of the, that ball. If we get that again this year, I'd expect huge things in week number one and honestly for the full season. But in week one specifically, I would expect that when most people go at this game, they're probably going at Chris Godwin. And I love Chris Godwin. I think that he is a great way to say salary if you need to. But Mike Evans is pretty dang good, too. And I think that the love for Chris Godwin, while justified, may be overshadowing how good Mike like Evans is. Last year, Evans had 38% of the Bucks' deep targets, and that was with Deshaun Jackson being in the fold for most of those games. Now you take D-Jax out of the fold, Chris Godwin is going to get some of those deep targets for sure, because he is a very talented and very athletic player, but Mike Evans is going to have a huge role in this offense, and now he's facing off against the 49ers. He'll probably be matched with a Kella Weatherspoon for a lot of this game, and he is 40 pounds lighter than Mike Evans, so Jameis can chuck it up, let Evans do what he does. Evans, or and Winston is $7,500. That's a pretty good salary for a guy who projects to throw the ball a lot and also throw the ball downfield quite a bit against a bad defense. I love Jimmy Garoppolo in this exact same game. On the other side here, Dante Pettis as a wide receiver, too. So both sides of this game are in play. My favorite stack here with everyone focusing on Chris Godwin is going to be Jameis Winston paired with Mike Evans. Everybody loves Chris Godwin, rightfully so, because the offense is going to be throwing the ball down the field, chucking it as often as possible. Winston and Evans make for a damn good stack on Sunday. But if you want to get a little bit cheaper, let's go down to Jacksonville, or I guess kind of East to Jacksonville from Tampa Bay. <laughs> you have Nick Foles. You have D.D. Westbrook. That's been the combination we've heard about all summer long. It's Nick Foles' first game with the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
what do we expect? I expect to see a radically different Jacksonville team than we saw last year. Part of that is because Nick Foles is back or is down there, and that's a a nominal quarterback upgrade over Blake Bortles. They also get their offensive line back healthy because last year they lost their starting left tackle in week two, lost their backup left tackle a couple of weeks later, and they used four different dudes at left tackle, which is generally not going to lead to very good things. I'm expecting upgrades on the offensive line and a quarterback but also offensive coordinator. They've got John Filippo there now. And last year, in the first half of games, the Jaguars threw on first down at the 30th highest rate in the league, according to Sharp Football Stats. That is a very low number. But the Minnesota Vikings, before Filippo was fired, ranked fifth in that number. And what that does is it gives extra volume to the quarterback, but it also increases the pace, which is good for the Jaguars and also good for the Chiefs. So I expect a lot of play volume in this game, which is good for both sides and good for Nick Foles and D.D. Westbrook. Last year, after the bye week, D.D. Westbrook had an insane market share, and it wasn't just, you know, his 25% of the overall targets. He was getting deep targets, and he basically had every red zone target on that team from week 10 on. They didn't have a whole lot of red zone targets. Most of those were going to D.D. Westbrook. We saw the connection be hot in the preseason in week number three. So D.D. Westbrook, I think, is one of the best values on the board here at $5,800. I like to run it back here with Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, Sandy Watkins, wherever you want to go. I think that you can come back with the Chiefs as well, despite the fact they're racing Jacksonville. But Nick Foles is $6,500, and D.D. Westbrook is super cheap too. So if you, if you want to get up to Christian McCaffrey, you want to get to Mike Evans and maybe go expensive on your defense, I think that this is a great way to do so. So Nick Foles at $6,500 is really in a tremendous spot, and a quarterback I think I'll use quite a bit this week. Nick Foles doesn't cost all that much. It's going to be peppering D.D. Westbrook with targets throughout Sunday's game. D.D. had a good year last year, and in a totally new offense, as you mentioned, he should be in store for a better year, or at least a better game, when the season opens on Sunday. Moving on, we get to the Detroit Lions. It's a team that not many people like, certainly from an offensive perspective. Sure, you like Kenny Galladay. Sure, you like Marvin Jones. But it's Daryl Bevel, it's Matt Patricia, and it's boring. And you're, you're kind of zagging while everyone else is zigging, stacking, well, the quarterback Matthew Stafford with Marvin Jones, the second wide receiver. What's going on here? I think the public's right on the Lions for the most part. I probably, I may not use them the rest of the year. But if you look at this matchup, there may not be a better time the entire year to use the Lions than what we have in this week against Arizona because Arizona's defense does not, not have Patrick Peterson. They do not have Robert Alford. And those are two big losses for that defense. And they probably weren't going to be that good of a defense to begin with. So two big upgrades there for this Lions offense. And also, they want to run a fast pace. And what that does is inflates play volume for the opposing team. It's probably not going to help the Cardinals out a ton this week because the Lions want to go super slow, but it will give the Lions more plays and they may run the entire year this year. And I want to take advantage when we get that chance because Matthew Stafford is $6,500. And no, he's probably not going to have the biggest volume because the Cardinals are probably going to get gashed on the ground by carry on Johnson. But I would expect Stafford to be pretty efficient there, given that Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay are both healthy in this offense. And they did add TJ Hawkinson at tight end as well. So Stafford is $6,600 and Marvin Jones is 61. I think that Kenny Galladay is a better player player on this team but when both those guys were healthy last year it was Jones who got more deep targets and I do want those if I'm not going to get a ton of overall volume so I think that when I'm stacking Matthew Stafford I'm probably going to go Marvin Jones slightly more often he is a bit cheaper than Kenny Galladay that helps as well and I think that he will probably not be as popular either so I may not use this Lions team at all the rest of 2019, but they're not going to get a better situation than they have here against the Cardinals. So I think if you're ever going to use Detroit, it might as well be in week one here on this slate. I'm totally with you here, Jim. Matt Stafford is someone that's on my radar in DFS because you're facing a relatively vanilla defense, and you know the Cardinals are going to score a ton of points. And hopefully Detroit matches them. Hopefully we see a lot of Matthew Stafford dumping off to carry on Johnson, Kenny Galladay down the field, and hopefully in that slot. We had a lot of Marvin Jones here this weekend. You mentioned before a cheap stack where you're going to pair a defense with a cheap player. Well, Chris Carson, we all like all summer long. And the Seattle defense against Cincinnati Bengals, that's something to watch also. They are just $4,500 on Sunday. Why do you like Seattle in general? 
a lot of what you just said, Greg, kind of hit the nail on the head there because I think this is a really attractive spot to go because the game script sets up really well for Seattle to do exactly what they want to do, and that's run the football. Chris Carson is $6,600. I think that is way too cheap given the role he projects to have this year, given all the things we've heard about Chris Carson throughout the offseason. So getting in there makes a lot of sense. But you look at this game flow. The Seattle Seahawks are 10-point favorites over a Cincinnati team that has had injuries to their left tackle. Their left tackle is replacing their left tackle is also in concussion protocol as of right now, may not be able to play on Sunday. And they've also had a couple of retirements on their offensive line for depth guys who may not have played, uh, but also it doesn't help to lose that depth up front. So Seattle at home, 10 point favorites. I like that spot a lot for them. Also no AJ Green for Cincinnati. That helps out Seattle quite a bit. So if they get a lead here, because Andy Dalton is, you know, pressured quite a bit by this defense that the Seattle Seahawks have assembled with Jadavian Clowney, that's going to get them a lead and that will allow them to use Chris Carson quite a bit. And Carson is someone that I expect a lot big things out of this year. They have talked about how they want to get him additional targets in the passing game. And in a half PP our scoring setting, a target for running back is worth twice as much as a carry. So every target that Chris Carson gets is worth a lot to his fantasy value. He is $6,600. I think that is way too cheap. Austin Eckler is in that exact same range for 64, and I do like him as well. But Chris Carson, pairing him with the Seattle defense, if one does well, the other likely will, likely will do well also, and that's exactly what we want from a stack. Chris Carson and the Seattle defense, both in a prime, prime opportunity to go off this weekend uh, at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, we trust Andy Dalton to do nothing but turn the ball over. Chris Carson, all they have done is talk him up, both as a runner and a receiver. Hopefully before we gets hurt, he gets hurt, we can capitalize on the points he's going to give us. The Seahawks, a fine stack on Sunday. One last stack to get into, you, and that is, well, the most talked about team in the offseason, the Cleveland Browns, where you're not putting in Baker and Odell and Jarvis Landry necessarily. You are stacking Nick Chubb with the Browns defense. How come? I'm kind of surprised, honestly, how little this stack has been getting talked up so far this week. Because when salaries came out, you have to remember, we were talking about Kareem Hunt uh, being in the fold with Cleveland. Obviously, he was going to be suspended. But salaries are pretty heavily correlated to season-long redraft ADP. And that was baked into where Nick Chubb was going. And Duke Johnson was still there. But now there's no Duke in town for Cleveland, which means that we're going to expect more targets for Nick Chubb and his snap rate will likely expand. So getting him at $7,400, I think, is a really good number. I also like the Browns defense because they're facing the Titans. The Titans will not have their left tackle, Taylor Lewan, for this game. He is suspended. And that Browns pass rush looked really good in the preseason. They have Olivier Vernon and Miles Garrett. That adds up really well. And they're also $4,300. They are cheaper than Seattle, cheaper than Baltimore, cheaper than Philadelphia but they also have similar upside to all those teams. I am a huge Marcus Mariota truther to my, to my deathbed. I will be a Marcus Mariota truther, but the dude will take a couple of sacks and Tennessee could be behind in this game with Lawan being out. I think that sets up really well for Nick Chubb. So Nick Chubb's role is not fully accounted for with his salary at $7,400. And I think that this Browns defense is a very cheap way to get upside. So I want to pair them together again. It's just like Chris Carson in Seattle. If one does well, the other should do well as also. So Nick Chubb, I think, makes a ton of sense. And pairing, pairing with the Browns defense, also pretty attractive in week one. Not exactly a popular stack, and I don't really know why either. It makes so much sense. Nick Chubb's price only is going to rise significantly. And this Browns defense, sorry, Truther, Jim, is going to get to Marcus Mariota. You're absolutely right. It should be a fun one on an opening day for Cleveland and a fun one for you if you stack them. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, it's been a blast. I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll talk some value plays tomorrow. Looking forward to that. We'll probably get some Nick Foles talk in there as well because I, I'm a little addicted to this Jaguars offense. We'll see how that goes, but looking forward to it, Greg. Thank you. Jim also looks forward to burning cash, so that's exciting, too. <laughs> For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a fantastic night. We'll see you tomorrow to give you some value plays and a preview of a real football game, Thursday Night Football. Have a great night. We'll see you then.